A presentation. First, a little bit about Realtek. What is SAP doing with HANA? You know, what are they telling us? Uh, some tips uh, when you go do this because you're kind of forced to do this, uh, and then you can ask questions. Um, now, this is always the, the trick. Does this work? All right, there we go. Let me make sure it's powered on. Is it working? Yeah, I think it's working. Otherwise, I use it. It is on. Yeah. All right, uh, Realtek, uh, we've been around for a while. We were started in 1994 uh, in Waldorf, Germany, by four um, consultants that worked for SAP, um, four basis consultants, and they um, started SAP literally across the street in Waldorf. Uh, then they went public a couple of years later, uh, came to the US in 1998. Uh, first, their headquarters were in Houston, and now they are outside of Philadelphia in Malvern, about 10, 15 minutes from the SAP mothership. Um, we are worldwide. Um, we have Germany, Japan, New Zealand. Uh, there used to be Singapore, but that went away for reasons I don't know. Um, so what do we do? There are basically two sides to the business. There's a consulting side and there's a software side. Uh, on the consulting side, there's OSTB migrations and upgrades. Um, that's where we we really got our claim to fame. We started doing that in 98, after SAP developed the OSB migration toolkit. And instead of doing it themselves, the first production one, they said, you do it, you fail. It was successful, we've done over a thousand now worldwide, and we've never failed. Uh, and now that we are in the HANA universe, um, you know, we move people from Oracle to HANA, or SQL Server, or MaxDB, or what have you. Um, and you know we have now also moved into the, the cloud world, so we can move you to Azure uh, or AWS or uh, the Google Cloud, whatever you like. Uh, we can move you there. Um, and then what happens often, um, especially with smaller organizations, they implement SAP, they go live, and about three weeks later, the basis manager basically is like, oh my gosh. There is a wild gorilla in my data center, it's called SAP, and if I have to do 24 by 7 support with people that I have, I will kill them in the next six weeks. So what happens is um, the kind of service that we provide is because we're world worldwide, we can do a follow the sun model, and we can put somebody on site with your team uh, so you have a direct contact, you have one throat to choke that's sitting right there in your data center or with your basis team, uh, and so you have direct contact to us and our worldwide organization. On the software side, um, it's, a, um, it's a product that was basically a precursor to Charm. Uh, it's about 20 plus years old. It was developed by a, a consultant on a project um, for himself and the client said, I want that, and that became a product called Transport Manager. Uh, it does everything that Charm does, and we think it does it a lot better. It is definitely, the implementation is a lot quicker. It's about four weeks, and you're up and running and good to go. And if you want to know more about that, please stop by our booth, um, but two aisles that way. Okay, so we have lots and lots of experience. Uh, we're certified uh, migration consultants. We have, we're certified in HANA, we do upgrades. We basically do anything from a technical perspective, from the network, the, the server, the operating system, the database, the application. At the moment you say, I need to configure, we don't know what, you're, what we're doing. That, then you have to get somebody else. Or I need to write a ABAP report, then you, know, you have to get somebody else. We can do all the troubleshooting, but we're not really, that's not really our forte. Um, but we have partners that we can turn to if you don't have those resources yourself. So what's new in the SAP universe? Um, so the technology, as you probably know if you're old like me, uh, you know, there were these PCs in the 80s um, and I was part of that revolution. Um, and we're now getting to the intelligent uh, enterprise uh, with SAP HANA and slowly but surely uh, it is moving in that direction. Um, what is interesting to me is that certain things that were 
old, you know, mainframes. They called them regions. Um, they became clients in SAP, and you know, you shared stuff in, on a mainframe. And now we are here, many many moons later, and we're called cloud, and we share lots and lots of servers with other people. So a lot of the concepts that were old were are suddenly new and hip, but have new stickers, and everybody is really, really excited about it. And people like VMware make a lot of money because they make it sound like it is something new. But to me, it's like, wait, I, I've seen this story once before. Anyway. Um, so, what has happened, or what is happening slowly is like, how the technology is changing is that it is the, the repetitive tasks are being slowly taken over by automation. Um, you can see like there the the robot applications. Uh, what is it? UiPath uh, does some of that. Uh, the AI uh, that is now part of Leonardo. All that automation is taking place, and so now the quote unquote high value. Um, activities are freed up for your workers and you really get to a, an environment where you have knowledge workers uh, which was something that was really popular a word in the 90s but I think that is actually now coming to fruition so what is the the, the point of this quote-unquote intelligent enterprise um, partly because you know in this world uh, where all or most of us are driven or working for profit for profit organizations and so it is important you know you always look at the bottom line what is your ROI what um, you know how can I do this what doesn't help is that a toilet seat is an asset but you as a worker are your liability and so the organization will try to get more productivity out of you and the more productivity they get out of you the that's better for the bottom line. Uh, and so this is where automation and the intelligent enterprise can help an organization reach that, those goals. And so when you look at HANA or S for HANA or any other IT application, ROI becomes a very, very important step because the CIO and the CFO will not write those checks if they don't see an ROI. The, the fact that it is cool is not enough. They, you know, it has to make sense for the business because many of these projects will cost you millions, tens of millions, and sometimes even hundreds of millions of dollars. So there needs to be an ROI, and you will see a little bit more about that later. So, I don't know how long you've been in the SAP world, but I, about eight years ago, the SAP HANA got introduced, and it was highly unstable. Um, I remember having a conference call with a company in Baltimore, and the guy was like, sorry, uh, I have a production problem. I am rebooting my production servers. And I was like, you're doing what? And he's like, yeah, it runs HANA, and the only way to fix this is that I have to reboot this stuff. And I'm like, how often do you do this? And it's like, oh, a couple of times a week. I mean, <laughs> this was, <laughs> you have probably worn their products. Um, anyway, the world has definitely progressed um, to where HANA has become stable, and now we're moving to S for HANA. Um, I don't know if you, you know, this is a play on HAL which was a step up from IBM. S4 is, you know, from R3 to S4, just like Windows NT is a play on VMS because the guy that developed it was a VMS developer, so there's all an homage to uh, Stanley Kubrick. Um, anyway, so the experience has totally changed. There's a lot of functionality that comes with it around AI and machine learning that you should look at and think about, like, okay, how does that technology help me either develop new products or new services uh, or how can like AI help me like with uh, my finance and um, operations and how can you improve those kinds of things. All that software is part of what you buy, it is baked in, um, but you have to turn it on and you have to use it, otherwise it just sits there. Um, so things to think about because those can be part of your ROI calculations uh, in the future. Um, so here's a little bit of confusion, and I don't know why SAP is not really clear about this. There is this deadline of January 1st, 2026, but that is only for your ECC. 
the rest does not fall under that. That is the deadline. The rest, you know, you. But SAP is not very clear about that. Um, the other thing to remember is this seems like in the far future, it is not. If you realize that there are 40,000 plus others that are forced to do the same thing. So if you're in 2023, 20, 24, probably half the world is working on this and you might be, you might have to wait a little or that people are just too busy. Uh, so start thinking about this now, start doing the planning and, and all that comes with it um, because this date is sooner than you think. Oops, sorry. So get, get ahead of the curve. Um, do a proof of concept. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, you know, make sure that you're up to, to snuff. You know, are you on the right version of ECC? Are you Unicode? Uh, you know, are you all that stuff? And look at the, uh, the PAM and you can see that. And so you might have to do an upgrade. Um, you know, there are still people out there that run on 46C, 31H. Yes, they are out there. <laughs> and there are more than you think there are. Um, and so, you know, that, those are things that you have to think about. Um, the same thing is, you know, is your organization familiar with Linux, either Red Hat or SUSE? Um, if not, it's time to start to get some training on that. Um, you know, if you're coming from a Windows universe, a Linux, SUSE Linux is different. I'm sorry. I'm, I mean, if you come from AIX or HPUX or Solaris, this looks familiar. But still, there's a, there's a gap. I mean, it's not a 100% overlap. There is a gap. And so you have to get some training and understanding of what gives. I'm not sure when this, OK. So OK, that's, sorry, that was one, two. All right. Um, you know, what is driving this? What are your costs? Um, there are hardware costs, there are software costs, there are maintenance costs. Um, it might, you might, you know, tie this is like, okay, when is my hardware coming to an end? When is start the pieces starting to drop out? That might be a good time to start implementing this instead of like buying all kinds of, you know, expensive HPOX or AIX servers and then a year and a half later buy a lot of Linux servers. Uh, why spend the money twice? You know, spend it once. Um, think about your implementation costs, you know, all that. And spend time on your benefits. Uh, another thing, and uh, if you go to SNP, they have this thing called the blue field, um, but that's, th that's their, using their technology. But usually, if you talk to the, the big guys, the PWCs and the Accentures of this universe, they will try to tell you, if you go to S4, do a green field. Why? Because they make more money. I'm really, it's that plain and simple. In a lot of situations, you can do a brownfield. In other words, you can take what you have and migrate it. It is, it, is, it is a shorter amount of time and it is less painful. If you have been part of an SAP implementation you know, in the last five, 10 years, you probably remember how painful that is. I mean, it is a painful process. A greenfield implementation is that all over again. And a lot of organizations are not willing to do that. It's like, eh, that was not fun. Why would I want to do that again to myself? But so be aware of that. Um, the other thing is like, although the S4, the S is for simplify, it does not mean that it is simple. It is still a complex application. Uh, like a lot of things got changed significantly and so you have to get your head around it again. You know, processes are different. Um, the UI is different, so you have to educate your user base. So there's a lot of stuff that you have to think about. So to do that, develop a roadmap and, you know, you can, again, go to your existing SI, find a new SI, you know, there are people that can help you develop this. Um, and while you're at it, this is usually a conversation is, are we going to the cloud? Does that make sense? And the cloud people will tell you everything in the cloud is cheaper and better and faster and blah, 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 blah. Not always. Not always. So pay, pay attention. And there, again, um, there are vendors out here that can help you figure out how does SAP play in my environment? You know, 
what is it doing to the network? What is it doing to my servers? What is it doing to my printers? There are vendors here that can help you figure that out. And then based on that, you can figure out, it's like, okay, if I go to the cloud, what does that mean? How does that impact my existing infrastructure? So um, those are things to think about. The one and two step uh, is you can basically go from wherever you are in, on ECC to business suite on HANA as step one, and then step two is to S4, or you can go straight to S4. Again, um, it's your willingness for risk, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's usually uh, a lot of resistance to S4. It's like, why do I want to do that? Da -da 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 -da. So things to think about. And the requirements, look at the PAM. You know, make sure that everything is, you know, that you're ready to make that leap. So, beautiful picture, kind of what we talked about. <coughs> this one might surprise you. There's still a lot of people that are not Unicode compliant. Um, so, make sure that you're Unicode compliant, which can be a painful project again. The other thing that you have to understand is that the way SAP HANA is priced is not on cores or CPUs or what you're used to when you buy Oracle or SQL Server. It's about how much memory you consume. So it becomes, and because this is an in-memory database, all your data will go into memory. So the smaller your, your memory footprint, the smaller the amount of money that you're paying to SAP, which means you need to archive. I can, Unless you have a limited amount of money. I mean, you know, I won't stop you, but mostly, you know, you need to start archiving. I worked for a uh, pharma organization for five years. Every year on January, this year we're going to archive. Five years later, we still had not done it. <laughs> it's like, could not do it. There was always somebody who said, I need to look at sales orders from 10 years ago. Really? Really? Yes. <laughs> so there's a lot of resistance in the organization. But because SAP licenses, are, HANA licenses are not for free, they are expensive. It becomes very important to do some archiving. And once you go live, you know, you have your stuff in memory and now you have transactions. So that memory consumption is growing. So it is important that you have a strategy in place to manage that, that memory growth. Uh, and so you get into this tiered um, storage where you, know, you move things that are hot to warm to cold. There is an SAP license involved in this uh, to, to manage that, but it's less than SAP HANA licenses. So again, it is important that you do that, or at least pay attention to it. After you've built your roadmap, start building your project plan. Um, you know, you, you did your requirements, and then you go in, onto the marketplace and you do the maintenance plan or the pre-checks. Here, some of us get really bitten. There's this thing called custom code. Some organizations have been very, very good. They have very few custom codes. Others have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and this becomes very painful. That becomes a lot of work. And, and so it is better to figure this out up front. Again, part of your roadmap and figuring out what is involved um, to clean that up. And, you know, I, I'm about to date myself, but when I started in this business, it was R322. And Revlon basically took SAP and then rewrote the whole thing. Uh, from, from scratch. He's like, ah, oh, we don't like it, but we want to write everything in ABAP. And they rewrote R3 for themselves. Anyway, it was like hundreds of thousands of changes. Um, and so the other thing, like if you are a techie and you've run, used some for an upgrade, in this case, you do some, and then after that is done, you're not done. Then there's still stuff that needs to be done on the finance side and stuff like that. So. Start planning this out. Project planning becomes very important. Um, and probably, and I'm, what should be clear is that it, this is more complex than just an upgrade. This is not just a technical upgrade like you're used to going from 5.0 to 6.0 or from you know, 4, 4, 6C to 4.7 or what, what have you in the past. This is a lot more. 
um, and so please be aware of that. Don't treat it as if it's just an upgrade. Um, so there, I briefly touched on this. There are two options. Um, you know, you can go to Sweden on HANA, or you can go straight ahead, or you can. But that's. It depends on your organization. Um, there, there's not a right answer here, but I want you to be aware that there are those options. Um, risk. Uh, I, I have clients that is like, why not go straight? It's like, nah, we, we don't feel comfortable. Um, and another one is like, I don't understand what the benefits are of S4. It's like, I don't get it, so I'll go to Sweet on Hana. Um, here, an example of what this looks like. Um, Let me know when you're done taking your picture. <laughs> All right. Interfaces. Um, interfaces can be a challenge when you go to S4. Um, if you are a smaller organization, you have 10, 20, 30 interfaces, you can do it by hand. If you're like GM and you have 1,500 plus interfaces, it becomes very <laughs> painful to make sure that every single one works by hand. Again, uh, we sell a product that does that check and basically flags the one that doesn't work. So it basically helps you um, with that. Um, test your printers and specifically test your check printers. I have funny stories of going live and suddenly the checks didn't print because somebody forgot to test them. And people get very, very unhappy when they do not get their checks. So please, please, please make sure that that works. The same is for scanners. If you have warehouses and they do all that scanner stuff, uh, make sure that that all works because you have new servers, new IP addresses. If you go to the cloud, it's a totally different animal make sure that that still works. Um, because, again, your developers will swear to you that they never hard code an IP address. Lo and behold, <laughs> it will happen. Um, it's, it's, it's almost predictable. Uh, but So it is important that you check and test all of this. And you have to be, you need somebody that is responsible for this that is extremely detail oriented that basically beats these people up because otherwise one or two will slip through and suddenly you have a lot of pain on your hand. Um, as I said before, it is not just an upgrade. Um, you're, you're probably moving, you're probably not running on Linux currently. If you are, this doesn't count. But HANA is probably new for you. Fiori is absolutely new for your user community. They're not, they're used to looking at a SAP GUI and suddenly it looks totally different. So you have to do a lot of training and, you know, making them familiar with this and why this is really better, which I believe it is, because I think the SAP GUI is kind of ugly. But <laughs> um, if you go to S4, besides the new interface, there's also the business processes have changed. So again, there is a training that has to be involved. Uh, so there's a lot of business involvement that has to be there from the very beginning. Uh, again, this is not just a technical upgrade. Almost there. Uh, so here's kind of an overview of what a project team would look like. You have a project manager, you have test managers, you have solution architects. You know, it's really, you know, a big team. And so you're probably looking at many, many people um, that you need to hire higher or you have to bring in from the outside. Either you use a, an Accenture or a smaller organization, depending on who you are. Um, in the olden days, for an OSDB migration, you needed somebody that is certified. Um, but for the current, if you do it now, with if you go to HANA and S for HANA, you don't need to. But I highly recommend that you use somebody that is certified. Because if something is going wrong, that these people understand both your source database and the HANA database. And if something goes off the rails, that they're like, oh, OK, I've seen this before. And so <laughs> that's why it is important. Um, and no matter who you hire, whether it is a big organization or a small organization, 
interview these people, talk to them. Who are you? What is your experience? Not because the vendor says, you know, Joe is going to show up on Monday. You better know that Joe is is good because there are a lot of people that can say SAP, but not everybody is an expert. I'm almost there. <laughs> All right. Because for most of us, Linux is new. Get familiar, get training. If you don't want to buy new hardware, give somebody $500 on a credit card and open an account on Azure or AWS and have them play around with it. It's, it's really, it can be a Christmas gift. Here, <laughs> have a Christmas gift for 500 bucks. Go play for a couple of months. Uh, have a good time. Learn this stuff. Get certified, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's really, and you will make them happy because these people are, are you know, techno nerds like me and they like to do this in their spare time. All right, one more. And then the most important thing is test, 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 and test some more. And that might seem obvious, but for most of us, we implemented SAP 10 years ago, we did all the testing, we wrote the test scripts, SAP, the environment has totally changed, but you've never updated your test scripts. And so you probably have to t spend some time making sure that your test scripts actually still work. And so, and when you've done that, just test until you're blue in the face. Uh, and if you do that well, your go live will literally be people forgetting their passwords. It's like, you know, that is what, what you want, and not that the business process is broken, and to avoid that is you test until you go crazy. All right, so where do you start? Just, it takes time, spend some time, create a test box, create a POC, uh, get familiar, and all that. So, we offer a POC, so if you want to talk to us, we, our booth is three aisles down um, and we can talk to you about it and we can also help you in that process help with a, with a roadmap. And I think some of our clients, but that's not that interesting. Questions? All right, we're out of time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you hit the limit there.